So you've been trying to find and develop your mixed voice and one of the most common threads out there, one of the most common exercises that you've found through every course, most vocal coaching channels out there, even local singing teachers you've gone to is ma 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 This damn ma exercise that I used to hate with a passion. I could not do the freaking thing at all. More than one of the first vocal courses that I bought had this exercise. And it's like, well, okay, so you need to develop your mix, your your mixed voice. So you just need to go, ma 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 ma, and that's all good and well if you could naturally do it. But I couldn't even sing that lower down in my range. The D was the big one for me. That, that, that kind of like slightly below that D four there was a big one for me. So basically, trying to sing this range here, ma 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 ma. He's, there's a shift in my voice right before that D. Or I could just fucking yell through it, right? Ma, 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 ma. And I'm sure that sound is really, really uh, familiar to a lot of you guys out there. It actually happens around about the C for me. Ma, 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 ma. And you're like pushing up from below. And it sounds fucking awful. You're like, that's not my mixed voice. And that's not how you sound, Mr. Vocal Course Guy, that's telling me that ma is the secret to all great Singing and finding your mixed voice, right? Is there a right way to practice this sound? Is there, you know, something wrong about the way that you've been approaching it? And is it really the be all and end all of developing mixed voice? Why is it so fucking popular in every single vocal course? It's even in my mixed voice booster vocal course, which I think is one of the best uh, mixed voice booster, <laughs> mixed voice vocal courses out there. Obviously, I'm biased towards this because I put it together after my many years of experience struggling to sing with mixed voice. There's a variant of this exercise in my course as well. And you guys know I don't really like these kind of exercises. Why is it in my freaking vocal course? Let's find out. Now, more than one of the first vocal courses that I bought early on in the you know late 90s, early 2000s, I bought quite a few courses at the time pre-YouTube. Do you believe there was life before YouTube? I, I remember it well. You know, you'd order courses from the back of classic rock magazine or, you know, Australian guitar magazine or whatever magazines you had. You do it like a money order and you get your get your CD or tapes. I even got one on cassette, which is actually great because I had an old Valiant. Um, and it was it was kind of one of these things where, you know, you, you don't, really see 20 videos before you buy someone's course you see an ad you get the course and then you get the and you'd be so excited about it and you'd be like just like and then they'd be like okay now the secret to do like mixed voice is ma 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 and you'd be like oh this fucking exercise again i hate it i can't do it now what used to happen to my voice around about the d4 was i get one or two things i don't think it falsetto ma 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 and that, that would happen pretty consistently to me and i'd have vocal coaches kind of scold me. You need to support your voice to do that. And then I'd support my voice and I'd yell at them. Ma, 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 ma. This guy, and I, there's no way I, in hell I can sing any higher than that. I can't even hit that D. I'm slightly flat on that when I'm doing that. They're like, oh no, you're yelling. Well, you told me to support at that pressure. Was what's, what's the deal with this? So this was a pretty consistent thing through my approach of through my you know many many years of learning how to sing there was more than one course that had it there was more than one singing teacher who was like oh i'm gonna get you to sing ma now and i'd be like until someone got me to ask myself four questions just like okay why are you doing this and we spoke about that in the last video i did in this channel about the very first vocal course that i bought why are you doing this what is the purpose of this and i could i was i just drew a blank i was like okay i've got no idea why i'm doing this Number two, what? Like, what's happening? What's actually changing to make these changes in there? How? How do we do this? If we want to find these things in the why and the what, how do we do this? What do I need to do? What can I change? Well, what position can I change? What things in my body can I change to make this happen? I finally went. And this was probably the biggest one for me that really held me back in my singing was people telling me that something happened in my voice at a certain point when it did not happen at that time point and I'm sure that's seventy percent of the people that follow this channel. You bought a vocal course or something where someone's telling you, Oh well you're like I'm a I'm a I'm a high barry and your vocal break is like right up here at an E and you can't even fucking sing an E, right? I, I, I feel your pain. I really, really do feel your pain. So let's go through the why, the what, the how and the when of this exercise. Number one, the purpose of this Ma 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 exercise and we're going to talk a little bit about where this came from in a moment, 
is to find your vowel space and to find your tone. There's something you're supposed to do in this exercise. Like any exercise out there, it does absolutely nothing for you that you don't do yourself. And this has actually come up in a couple of videos I've seen recently where people are talking about, you know, various warm-ups or Michael Jackson's warm-up. And they're like, hmm, it's really strange that, you know, he's doing a legato warm-up when it's a speech level singing thing. And it's supposed to be all about uh, the, the consonant sounds, this kind of thing. If you actually look back to, you know, 80s Seth, Rick, Seth Riggs videos, he talks a lot about vowel modification and he talks about not doing anything contrived with the voice. And he talks about sidestepping the consonant sounds, basically the opposite premise of what modern day speech level singing is. It's basically singing with the same freedom of your speech. It's kind of like Legola Aperta. The open throat is actually about multiple stages of constriction within the throat. You know, if you open up your throat, you end up constricting. Open throat is not open. There's this misinterpretations over time. I mean, you know, these a lot of these videos of the, the speech level singing stuff are 40 years ago. You're going to get this... Um, can I say this anymore? This Chinese whispers thing. Um, I'm gonna. I'm so gonna get some comments about that. It's what we say here in Australia. Anyway, we're in the past here in Australia. We can say things like that. We're basically someone says something, someone else does it, someone else says this thing about it, someone else does it, someone else says it. Forty years down the track, they're actually talking about something completely different to what's actually going on, right? Um, so finding your vowel space, that is the purpose of this exercise. You're not supposed to pronounce, say, say we do that, you know, at, at the G where I did it ish, the very first time I demonstrated that for you. We're not supposed to go ma, 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 and then wonder why I'm shouting at the top or kind of unable to hit that pitch, right? What we've got to do is work out how to sing that sound without constricting and pronouncing in that way. Ma, 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 That sound at the top is is pretty much nothing like the way that I speak the word ma. It's it's slightly, na it's, it's, it's spread but narrowing within the vocal tract. So more like mer. Imagine the word mermaid. Say we sing that at the top. And that's what's in my mixed voice booster course. Ma, 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 ma. You hear the ma sound, right? That's me. That's me slightly, slightly narrowing the vocal tract up through that higher midsection or that the midsection in my voice there. Did you know that you're supposed to be doing that within this exercise, or have you just been singing ma 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 ma? Because that's what I used to do. Finding your vowel space, finding your tone as well. You notice my tone changes. Now people freak out about this because they're like, "Well, I don't want to sound like a little kid when I sing. I don't want to sound like I'm sad when I'm singing. I don't want to sound like I'm a witch." <laughs> I don't want to sound like that. I don't want to sing Judas Priest songs, right? Yet, when you learn how to do this, you don't actually, well, at least when you do this properly, it's they're really just ways to find those registers within the voice. If I'm singing, you know, say I am singing up into my high range at, at oh, let's go really high. Let's, let's go an F, right? La! You know, can you hear the tone shifts in my voice or is that just someone with a who's able to sing really really high and do it well and really confidently on cue right i don't actually sound like i've got these different you know kind of funny tones within my voice that's because those those kind of gradient tones in my voice facilitate me being able to sing high. so number one is finding your vowel space finding your tone you let me know in the comments down below when you've been doing this ma 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 exercise are you trying to find your vowel space are you trying to find your tone it's totally fine if you're not. This probably explains why you haven't seen any improvement in your singing. Number two is what? What does this mean? What does vowel space mean? What does tone change really mean? What are you speaking about, Mr. Upside Down in Australia? Southern Hemisphere. Changing the space is really changing the tuning fork. The voice is a way I like to think about it. Basically, you've got a specific tone that you're making, a specific pitch you're making, specific value you want to sing, and each of these things, and there's there's actually a lot of them that ring out at the same time. The voice makes more than one tone at the same point at the same time. You've got to ring them out in the right way, and you're singing the same vowel while changing the pitch. So you've got to change something within that vowel to make that vowel come out, you know, in a succinct way, right? And we're basically changing the structure of our vowel up into the soft palate. So partly behind the tongue, partly up into our resonant space. If we're more narrow in that space, we accentuate high frequencies because high frequencies, high pitches, fast frequencies resonate in a smaller space, right? They need to be fast. Lower frequencies vibrate in a bigger space. The bigger you make your voice, the lower you vibrate and the less well you can sing high notes. And that's really what's going on when I change in our space. 
And we're changing our, our, our tone. This is a, this is a, a, a trickier one to explain, but basically your voice is a tool of reflex. It's like, kind of like when you're angry on the phone, you're like, your voice is raising like this. And you're like, what the, you're not listening to me. What the hell? This is not something you learned when you were a kid. Or like, like you're really sad, man. It's just awful. I just can't believe this has happened again. You never learned how to do that, but this changes things in your voice, right? And there's a very specific peak, um, desired coordination in, in, in the voice when you're singing in certain ranges of the voice, in the registers of the voice that are encouraged by these sounds. You use these sounds to find them. Eventually you don't need to use them and you don't actually sound like you're singing, like you're crying <laughs> when you're singing or like, like you're sounding like some <laughs> crazy witch, right? I don't sound like that. I'm singing in the high range. So I'm singing the really crazy high sound garden kind of stuff. Yeah, it doesn't really sound like that. The how. How do we do this? You're like, okay, I get it. Right. We got to, we got to find something to do. We've got to, you know, work out what's really going on, but how do I do that? You know, I know my form has got to change. How do we get to, got to do that? And that's why you take singing lessons. Basically, someone's going to tell you, okay, now make this sound and pay attention to what happens to this frequency in the mouth. Pay attention to what happens to this frequency behind the tongue. Pay attention to what happens to your frequency and your support, all these kind of things. It, it's a pretty intrinsic thing to the voice because you'll come at this from different places and uh, different voices and all, and all that kind of stuff and different levels. And there's different things that people are going to give you. And, and, and the how is, is probably the hardest thing to learn and, and, and definitely almost impossible to learn on your own, I have to say. And that's probably why you're watching these videos right here, right now. Yeah, um, you know, find your formats in the vowel. We've done a ton of videos on that on this channel recently. I'm not going to go into it. You know, find your bright ping within the vowel. Front with a back for R vowels. You, you know, good to go. You know, accentuate your tone. Go too far with it. Go too far with your, you know, tonal intent. I've got a video on that as well, an older video. I won't go into it. We're going to do it like a 400 hour video if I have to go into that stuff in this video. And then finally, when? This is the big thing that really held me back. So the first few courses that I bought, and the first few singing teachers that I went to were like, okay, so, you know, the vocal break is at E4. I couldn't even sing an E4 when I first started singing. I kind of had some falsetto notes. I had an okay falsetto. Ooh, ooh. It's kind of sound, but if I actually wanted to sing, you know, an, an E4. La, I could get my falsetto higher than that. I don't even think I could really shout that sound out when I first started learning how to sing. Yet people were like, you don't do any of this stuff until you're, you know, singing an E4. Until I went to a, a, a voice teacher who was just like, why the fuck are you waiting so late? Why are you waiting so late? What the, what the hell? Like your, you know, your breaks around about, you know, maybe the C4. You know, we do an early morning session. it would be like, well, it's B, it's B3 today. Or we'd be later in the day, I'd done some speaking, some singing, it'd be like, oh, it's, you know, like D flat, something like that. It kind of moves about. Yet I was trying to wait until this, we we're trying to wait until this E4 to, to manage my breaks. So with this ma 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 exercise, again, I used to struggle with that D4, like I told you. Second, I started doing it at a, at a C. Ma, 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 ma. You can hear there's a shift in my voice, right? Ma, 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 ma. As I'm spreading up into the palate, there's something happening in my voice. If I tried to make that change at a D4, it's too late. So the way to work this out is actually to sing as light as possible and to preempt it, basically. If you get to that D4, where I, there's a lot of courses out there where, you know, people with really high voices that tell you they're a high barry man, whatever it is, and they're obviously not actually baritones when they sing or when they speak. Um, do it before them. You go against their advice. Go against their advice and do it lower. Manage your breaks lower. Manage your tones lower. That has changed my life and has extended my range exponentially doing this stuff early. You know, don't wait until a C5 to like, hmm, maybe I should add in my cry now. Let's do it at, a, at an E4. You've always got the CT muscle engaged when you sing throughout your full range. Cry is not something you bring in. It's something that's always there in your voice. So let's start managing it at, at D4. Let's start managing it at, at, at E4. And we're singing in those ranges there instead of, you know, say we're doing the G here. I say we're doing an A. Let's go up to the Alice in Chains range, right? If I'm going... Ma, ma, you know, second note is above my first break. Ma, 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 something has to happen in my voice, right? I'm getting up into that palette there. Third note up there. 
the E, we've mm-hmm. got to start thinking about our cry, and this is about a semitone below my second break, around about the F, maybe a G flat on a really good day. And then all of a sudden I find my really strong mixed voice at the top, which then allows me to sing, you know. And find that really powerful mixed voice at the top. But I've done that a lot lower than you've thought I've done that, right? That's just really freaking high singing by a guy that's a castrato, right? Well, no, actually, my break is most likely lower than a lot of you guys watching this video. I don't really care about that. It doesn't matter. It's not something I've built my channel around being like, well, I'm the baritone vocal coach and my breaks at this. And, and look at my typo negative and Mark Lanning and vocal covers. I just don't care about that. That's That's a self, you know, it's a limiting belief that you have about that stuff and, and a little bit of Dunning-Kruger effect if you think that that's holding you back from singing higher. Voice types are about character within a specific range. Within that range of C2 to A2, maybe A3, I would absolutely fit that character. If I went in singing the way that I do to a, you know, an opera piece and I was like, look, I can sing a D5, they'd be like, get out, just get out, just do it. Leave. Leave the building now. You're fired. It's a very different thing to what voice type is really about. That wasn't the purpose of this video anyway. So number one, why? Why are you doing it? Number two, what? What are you doing? How? When? Once I started to ask myself these questions with every single exercise that I was practicing and every sound I was doing and even courses I was doing and singing lessons, why am I taking this singing lesson? What is it going to do for me? How do we work through stuff? And, you know, when are we doing these things? What do they want me to do? What's the timing of this stuff? This started to become a massive change in my singing voice. And I hope you guys start asking yourself those questions with exercises like this, you know, kind of ma exercise. If you just sing ma, it's going to do shit all for you. That's you understand the why, the what, the how, and the when. So if I'm quick enough for you, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We are going to talk soon.